raising a toast as always to the finer things in life, getting you all the buzz in the business of luxury, the very latest in technology. A very warm welcome to a fresh edition of Aspire. I'm Vikram, here at the Pinakin store in Mumbai. Here's what's on the show this time. What's hurting the prospects of Mumbai's fine dine industry? Are these new age restaurateurs to blame? All the buzz from the world of tech. We take a look at the new game from the creators of Flappy Bird. And a phone that would make even the iPhone feel like a budget device. The new Virtu Signature Touch. The Elephant God is back in all his glory. We tell you how the Lord of Prosperity has influenced the many facets of luxury. And we've got our picks of the best at the Lakme Fashion Week Winter Festive 2014. Here on Aspire, we've been talking about Mumbai's eating out culture, how it's been going through a shift. That shift may not be tectonic, but of course, it is a shift all the same. More and more people are going out. And then there are these new thematic restaurants that are coming out as well. The people who are driving it are in their 20s and 30s, these new age restaurateurs. And uh, they're seeing great potential in the growth of this side of the business. And of course, for people like you and me, we're getting more and more spoiled for choice. This still begs the question, where does it leave Mumbai's fine dine industry? There were very few restaurants to start with. Of course, there is the Zodiac Grill at the Taj Mahal, but whatever else has happened beyond that has been getting muzzled by this new age competition. Kushbu is examining the trend. Glitzy cutlery, parched tablecloths, hushed rooms, liveried service, classy ambiance, elements of a fine dine restaurant. A large number of them within luxury hotels, like the Taj Mahal's Zodiac Grill or the Leela's Le Cirque. We've also seen Mekong come up at the Palladium Hotel last year. The restaurant industry in India is worth 48 billion US dollars currently. By 2018, it is expected to grow to 78 billion US dollars at 11% CAGR. Of this, the fine dine market is estimated at 95 million US dollars with approximately 50 players in the business. It is poised to grow to 195 million US dollars by 2018 at a CAGR of 15%. But the segment that's growing much faster is the premium, the chic dining space at a CAGR of 18%, set to grow from 760 million US dollars to 1740 million US dollars by 2018. That growth has forced at least the standalone fine dine restaurants like Hakasa that set up shop in Mumbai in 2011 to look long and hard at their menu and their prices or like Ellipsis in South Mumbai that now banks heavily on its Sunday brunch, all in a bid to attract the value-conscious Indian customer. A fine dining uh, is something which is not so ingrained in our culture. So the first part of the battle is getting someone accustomed to the experience. The second part of the battle is actually the food. Uh, if you talk about having French cuisine or you talk about having something which is different, uh, you're not necessarily talking to everyone on uh, that wide an audience uh, which appreciates that. The demand right now is so much in the youth sector. Today we've got a lot, lot, lot more young people who've gone abroad, studied and come back. Now they've been exposed to all that over there. So as a continuity of the same lifestyle, they're very happy. So they identify with this. A lot of people have taken a a call that that is a very good spot to be where you are not as expensive as a five star uh, but you provide the sim you know, similar type of service and food. Meet Imrun Sethi, Sahil Timbadia and Sumit Kambir, the newer faces of Mumbai's culinary scene. Each of them with their partners is the brain behind Mumbai's new range of concept dining spaces. Are they then the ones softly killing Mumbai's fine dining space? Uh, statistics will show that um, it's, it's these casual diners um, which are really coming up and opening. They're smaller, they might be 40 covers. Casual chic in service and in ambience. Snug and homely. And with 
the considered quirk. Chandeliers with naked bulbs, metal racks holding mismatched vintage looking knickknacks, floral upholstery, exposed brick walls, chalk drawings and typography with fun one-liners. The menu, largely European, evokes fresh flavours like the grilled shrimp rubbed with sun-dried tomatoes or the bacon-wrapped dates. Following your heart and creating newer concepts and dining experiences seems to be the theme in the restaurant business. I am sitting with Imran Sethi of Tertulia, who has seen roaring success in Pune and has now finally come to Bombay. Imran, for one, wanted to be a DJ. He also pursued the management uh, side of things. And now, finally, he is in the restaurant business for the past six years. We've seen a spurt of these new casual dining kind of concept restaurants come up, uh, which are giving the fine dine space tough competition. What do you think is causing this shift? It's non-intimidating. It's about being comfortable in your own skin. It's about being who you are. Like, people can come in, people can come dressed up, some people can dress down and still everybody fits in together. I feel generally people are, are traveling so much more today. They're seeing things around the world and when they come back to India and they feel that, wow, what if there was a place like I went to in my last holiday and you can make that here. So I think everyone's is aspirational. Everyone wants to do more, do new things. They want to bring new concepts back to India. That's the thought that excites Sahil and his partners, Neville and Anu. The band of boys who run rooftop resto bar Bonobo in Mumbai's Bandra since 2008. Four years down, the boys have created this, the Jam Jar Diner in Mumbai's suburb, Varsova. From Bonobo's wild jungle theme to Jam Jar's grandma's living room setup, both are distinctly different, even in their menus. Now in 2014, the boys have this, Cafe Nemo. Tucked away in a fisherman's colony here in Worli, this isn't quite the spot where you'd come hang out with friends over drinks. And a fine dine restaurant for sure is never going to step into such a space. But that really is the idea that young restauranters are bringing to the culinary scene here in Mumbai, where they spot a location and convert it into an entirely new concept restaurant. Clearly, theirs is an appetite for risk. But it's measured risk. Just like Tertulia, located in Shivaji Park, has taken on the challenge of converting a non-hangout spot into a happening one for restaurant junkies. With Cafe Nemo, the partners have a retreat in the middle of a veritable village. Each room at Nemo has a different vibe and decor. Though casual dining, it's the cafe feel that plays strong here. This place also has a unique history. Each room used to be given to a Sindhi family after partition. And uh, we didn't really change a large part of it. We wanted to do a quick turnover uh, and start. Each of the rooms share the monochromatic theme. With artsy walls, the Mumbai map hand-drawn on the bar counter and lots of greenery. On the menu, a whole mix of cuisines. The thing we focused on was on the food and the lack of any particular cuisine per se. This uh, formula works for us. We want to shy away from uh, being too serious. And that rules out fine dining because it is serious. Besides, the costs are higher, innovation is lesser and business is restricted only to weekends. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, very few people will actually appreciate going to a place which is um, quiet. Your, the only uh, takeaways from your experience are the food and the service. Uh, you don't really have uh, sort of uh, contemporary music playing or you don't have uh, sort of a young vibe to it. I think that's what people in Bombay really look forward to nowadays. And hence the choice is clear for young restaurateurs. Consider investments. A casual chic diner would take about half as much to set up than a fine dine restaurant and reaching break-even would take about half the time. The phenomenon is taking over further down the south of Mumbai as well. Say hello to the pantry. This one run by three partners, Pankil, Sumit and Abhishek, who form neighbourhood hospitality, already the proud owners of the bustling gastro pub Woodside Inn in neighbouring Kolaba. 
The pantry does look like it just got imported from an old French colony. The high beamed ceilings, pastel shades, kettles spread across, vintage utensils and glass jars. All invoke the homely kitchen feel. Post Woodside's gushing vibe, the pantry is a stark change. It doesn't have a bar to start with, it uses fresh and local produce for the food and it's their first attempt at baking too. Oh, and the free Wi-Fi sets the mood going for those scouting for a place to work out of. We love the, the, the neighborhood we're located in and uh, we believe we want to spend a little more time on the concept, try and see where we can learn a little more from our guests. We spend a lot of time at the pantry as well, speaking to guests, getting feedback from them and we believe it's still at a nascent stage. Clearly, these guys are explorers, almost always serial entrepreneurs, and they are keen not to repeat mistakes that have marked the end of many other restaurant chains. Connecting with customers, maintaining affordable price points, keeping menus on the churn are factors that keep them in business. I see chic casual dining uh, really being the, for lack of a better word, a substitute. Uh, for the fine dining experience. If you're looking at the higher end of the, the casual dining spectrum, uh, that is definitely a, a place where a lot of people will get into and a space that is going to grow quite well and quite rapidly. Whatever happens in the world makes its entry into India via Bombay. Delhi it catches up. Pune is this Bangalore. These are the four cities which it all happens. So yes, it's happening because people from all over, all the states of India are travelling and nothing is more glamorous and uh, attractive right now than the food industry. So as much as lateral growth we are seeing in the restaurant business, we'd still like to see it uh, take it up a few notches, perhaps in themes and also of course the fine dine options. In fact, here's looking at some crazy cool restaurants that uh, we've come across around the world. The kitschy theme raining high at this Cape Town restaurant, the Bombay Bicycle Club. It's a theatre in there with the gaudy placement of quirky antiques, musical instruments, chairs and a giant tiger on a bed hanging from the ceiling. Also the swing-like seating arrangement for a fun night to remember. The Dolce & Gabbana Gold restaurant in Milan, as the name suggests, has the gold theme going throughout. Yes, not real gold, but it's all too glitzy. The regulars of the likes of Kylie Minogue, Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton. The Help Yourself theme takes a whole new meaning at this bizarre joint in Hamburg in Germany. Schwerellos and Zeitloss. Once you get a table, you got to place your order on touch screens, make the payment and wait for your food to arrive on these large roller coaster like tracks. No waiters, no service. What happens when? No, we're not asking. That's the name of an eatery in New York. It's a temporary restaurant installation that transforms every 30 days for 9 months, offering guests an ever-changing culinary, visual and sound experience. Water babies will love this one. Etha in Maldives sits 16 feet underwater. Its curved, transparent acrylic walls give a fantastic view of the shimmering fish, sharks and turtles in the blue Maldivian waters. This place offers a dining experience that's quite hard to forget. We suggest you save it for that special day. Well, if you haven't visited some of these restaurants, we suggest you put it on your itinerary the next time you're traveling. For the moment, we're taking a quick break here on this edition of Aspire. This is what is coming up. The Elephant God is back in all his glory. We tell you how the Lord of Prosperity has influenced the many facets of luxury. And we've got our picks of the best at the Lakme Fashion Week Winter Festive 2014. And a phone that would make even the iPhone feel like a budget device. The new Virtu Signature Touch. <laughs>